Welcome everyone to this fine autumn day. Hey, grab that cup of coffee. It's coffee shop Thursday. What? Yeah, it's no autumn mug. It's celebrating the Steelers' victory on Monday Night Football. Whew, they almost managed to get that game away, just like the Bills did on Sunday. Okay, let's not even go there. But, yeah, I see it's a, a tree effect leaf storm going on out there right now. Those leaves are coming down like crazy. Got to get out and get them cleaned up. But, hey, before we do that, let's give a shout-out to all of our veterans out there um, who have served in the armed forces. We thank you for your service. And uh, we know that this world, especially the world we live in here, is, is a much better and safer place because of what they've done for us. So thank you so much. Hey, we're going to take a look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter, for our uh, second reading this coming Sunday. We haven't been in Hebrews for a while because, well, our little trip through Hebrews got interrupted by Reformation Sunday and All Saints Sunday. So there's a bunch of stuff we're skipping over to move into the text for today. But just keep in mind, it's all about the high priest. It just goes on and on and on about Jesus being our great high priest. And not only is he the high priest, he's the actual sacrifice as well. And that's a lot of imagery and language that we just don't find elsewhere in the scriptures. Now remember, this book of Hebrews was written primarily to a Jewish audience. But there were some Gentiles sprinkled in there as well. But these were Jews who were tempted just to bag the whole Christian thing and go back to being just plain old Jews and getting a lot of pressure uh, from the surrounding community and also their families to do just that. Ah, Jesus, yeah, he was a good guy. He did a lot of good things, but just forget him. Come on back. Let's just, let's go back to the synagogue and do our thing. Well, the author of Hebrews, who probably was not the Apostle Paul, but could likely have been an apostle who went around with Paul and remembered his words and he penned this letter which many think was originally a sermon and then was writ handwritten out and kind of some embellishments given to it as well and then circulated as a letter amongst all the Jewish communities and it, encouraging them to to move on in their faith and not give up yeah things don't look too great but just just hang in there the emphasis is that Jesus is coming again and a lot of them believed he was coming during their lifetime so just come on hold tough hold tough and we'll see that in our scriptures that come right after our passage for today in the last part of Hebrews they give example after example of faithfulness from Old Testament um, heroes so to speak and that's that great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us yeah it's there but for right now, we're kind of finishing up this whole imagery of Jesus as the great high priest. And I know, I know, it, there's a lot of that that goes on there, especially in the chapters just preceding this. And you're kind of wondering, when are we going to be done with this? Well, remember, maybe it's kind of hard for us to digest some of that stuff and we don't really get it. But for a, a first century Jew, this is really important stuff. I mean, the priesthood is central to our way of worship and um, our giving of our sacrifices to God and things like that. Well, interesting enough, our passage begins with that whole thought process again, only this time the, the author says, hey, you know, every day there's the priest standing up there giving his offerings again and again and again. And where's Jesus? He's sitting down. And why is he sitting down? at God's right hand. He's sitting there because it's done. Everything's finished. It's perfection. Not perfection in the way that we often think of, oh, this is um, whole and pure and stuff like that. No, it's done. It's complete. It's finished. Yeah. Jesus as the great high priest, also Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice. Okay, all that talk is kind of coming to an end now, and now it's all good, positive stuff. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, remember, only the priests could do that, but we can do that now, you and I, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, 
that is through his flesh remember the curtain was ripped in two well his body was torn for us and since we have a great priest over the house of god let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith remember our hearts just before this he brings up the uh, passage from jeremiah 31 i'll write the covenant on your hearts there it is with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering for he who has promised is faithful and then there's one more sentence i just have to say this and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the holy day approaching see the they really did believe that Jesus was coming real fast, real soon, that he could be living in these end of days, end of times, that there's talk about that in the Old Testament as well. But I love that. It's This whole passage right here is, is powerful. It's verses 19 and following. And it's, it's telling us, just do it, just do it. And that's what the rest of Hebrews is gonna do. Talk about some rubber hitting the road type of issues. Um, for the people in their in their life of faith, but how do you like that that one sentence there? What's everybody think about that? Provoking one another to love and good deeds. You know what? Uh, another translation of that word provoke is irritate, irritate each other, get on each other's case to do it. What? You never really see that elsewhere in the scripture except in this passage. You know. Like, we really have to push each other sometimes. And, and what he's saying is, don't forget about coming to church. Come together. This is all about community. For the author here, there's no such thing as Lone Ranger Christianity. Now, I know for a lot of people, it's difficult to get out and about. And you might be in a situation where you're really um, kind of by yourself a lot. And that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about as God's people, if you have to get up and go, then get up and go. Go do it. Oh, if you can't, you can pray. I mean, we can all use the prayers of the faithful all the time. But come, come together, meet together, because we indeed do feed off of each other. And we encourage one another. And we provoke one another come on let's just do it yeah yeah let's go raw yeah that's what it is and sometimes it can be kind of irritating would you just stop it hey but sometimes we need to be irritated right irritated to do deeds of love there it is there it is so during my announcement time after church when i started announcing all those things that we have going on and the different projects and the different um uh, mission things you can get involved with yeah, I'm going to keep on doing it because I'm supposed to irritate you to do deeds of love. I'll just point you right back to Hebrews chapter 10. It's right here. So, um, it's a cool book. It's a difficult book to sometimes get through, once again, because there is so much imagery that's based on the Jewish uh, faith practices, but... It is all about Jesus and what he has done for us and what he is doing for us right now. And these words encourage us to keep up the good work and to truly help one another in doing those works of good and those good deeds. So, now that I've said that, come on up here and help me rake my leaves today, would you? Eh... Just go grab a cup of coffee and sit around and talk with your friends about our faith in Jesus and in a loving God who has sent his son into this world to be our great high priest. Mm -mm. Blessings be with you on this great autumn day.